It's not a problem for me. I don't think it's a problem for Jan either. I don't know where the idea comes from that a Russian should not help a foreigner prepare for a title match with a Russian. Not from a great mind, perhaps. <laughs> okay, uh, that's that's not gonna that's not gonna that's not gonna help Dubov uh, in, in in the Russian chess circles by saying by basically calling people stupid. All right, so we're gonna start with this this uh, this this tweet. So this tweet is um, despite the final result, I am proud that I was part of the very nice team. Thanks to at LA Chessis, uh, Jan Napomniachi for this invitation. Probably there were mistakes in preparation, but only few people know how hard Jan worked for the tournament. Hope he will recover uh, and come back stronger. Very normal. Of course, I congratulate a world champion, but just a small remark. Imagine you have to play a world championship match against Carlson. Will you accept, will you accept help from, say, from, let's say, Hammer or Tari? And then Sergey says, and will you offer them to help you? Okay. All right, so this is the first first part um, of uh, of it, which clearly you can tell Sergey is not very happy. So that's that's where that's where we start with. Uh, Sergey clearly not is not very happy about it. But now there's also an article we're going to cover as well. So let me adjust this. Chess trader row erupts in Russia after Carlson world title win. Okay, prominent figures from Russian chess have reacted with shock to the news that one of their countrymen helped to prepare Magnus Carlson for his world title match against Jan Nepomniachtchi. Carlson wrapped up a dominant defense of his crown by beating the Pomniachi in Game 11 of their best of 14 series in Dubai on Friday. That guy, the Nor that that gave the Norwegian an unassailable seven and a half, three and a half fleet as he emerged victorious in a fifth world title match to cement his legacy as one of the greatest ever to play the game. All right, let's keep keep going. Napomniachi, known as Nepo, had held Carlson to five draws to open their showdown before cracking in a marathon game six. The Russian never fully recovered and made several big blunders on his way to defeat, including a reckless attack on Carlson's rook with his 23rd move on Friday, paving the way for his resignation. While the result was on the cards, there was shock afterwards when one on or when an online clip revealed the team who had helped Carlson prepare for his meeting with Napomniachi. Among them was Russia's Daniil Dubov, the 2018 World Rapid Chess Champion. All right, so there's a tweet from Chess24, which says, Now Magnus Carlsen reveals his team, Peter Heine Chess, the adult in the room, Laurent Fresnay, I wanted someone, French, and MVL and Bacro were not available. GM Jan Gustafsson, the go-to guy for medium and low-cultural reference ideas, Jordan Van Forest, the new guy, and ideas man, Dubov. All right, uh, it's kind of important for Carlsen to actually like the guys Dubov25 says in the clip as Carlsen introduces his team. For instance, the Russian team, it's exactly the opposite. Normally they would just normally they would bring all the biggest guns in. It doesn't matter if they're fighting or they are friends or whatever. You just use all the power. Here it it's a European approach. Mostly you care about the atmosphere and so on, and only then you need people to work well. Still, sometimes I feel like I'm responsible for the chess part. All these guys are nice guys, and I'm not a, and I'm not a nice guy, but someone has to work. It's it's a kind of problem. Otherwise, I would never be in the team. I'm joking, of course. In general, I think Carlson kind of likes us and tends to trust us. The news stunned some fans online with one replying, Dubov is a big surprise to me. There was disappointment among some in the Russian chess community that Dubov had aided a foreigner for such a vital showdown with one of their own. Oh, Dania, Dania, why? How much for? Why could you not take a break for one match or commentate on it on any internet stream? Bright, brightly and talentedly wrote Russian Grandmaster Sergei Shipov on his Telegram account. And now the seeds of discord have been sown in the Russian team. It's turned into a classic situation of a stranger among his own. P.S. I think that now, now Dubov won't play for the Russian team, and that's correct, he, he added, meaning Shipov. Russian chess star Sergei, Sergei Karyak at 31 was similarly dubious about Dubov's actions. The idea... Actually, let me scroll down. The, the idea wouldn't even come to my head. I wouldn't even consider it, just as I would not try to entice any of the Norwegians to my team, said Karyakin, whose own world title defeat against Carlsen was settled by rapid tiebreaks in New York in 2016. I would never do that in my life, but but let it be, I would never do that in my life, or basically, or let it be on my conscience. I think that's a mistranslation. Dania is a strong grandmaster, but I don't understand his actions. It's hard to say how much this affected Carlson's victory. He has a large team, but Dubov was on the team. He made a contribution, that's for sure. 
All right. Former Russian Chess Federation president Ilya Levitov said he struggled said he has struggled to digest the news. Yesterday evening, it became known that Daniil Dubov helped Magnus. To be honest, first of all, I didn't believe it, but it turned out to be true, Levitov wrote. I can't get this idea into my head. Daniil loves to say how proud he is to represent Russia, that we are a great chess superpower, and that we should always win. However, speaking of champion not, Dubov himself played down the rope. The fact that someone might not like it isn't news, he said. This isn't the first time I've encountered this. I take this relatively calmly. It's not a problem for me. I, I don't think it's a problem for Jan either. I don't know where the idea comes from that a Russian should not help a foreigner pr prepare for a title match with a Russian. Not from a great mind, perhaps. <laughs> okay, uh, that's that's not gonna that's not gonna that's not gonna help Dubov uh, in, in in the Russian chess circles by saying by basically calling people stupid. Uh, there are some imperial ambitions. Everyone is against us. Everyone is em enemies, especially if something doesn't work out for us. In general, logically, you can look at all of this differently. From the point of view of the Russian national team. One of the best Russian chess players, relatively young, worked with the best chess player in history. He gained experience that will help him in his career. For example, after my previous collaboration with Magnus, I won the World Rapid Chess Championship. This is also how you can look at the situation. Or you can see it in the context of your own and strangers. All right. Um, Carlson backed 60% of the 2 million, 2.26 million uh, in US dollars prize money for his victory and said he was satisfied with his performance. It's hard to feel the great joy when the situation was so comfortable to begin with, but I'm happy with a very good performance overall, said the 31-year-old. You can point to things you could have done differently in every game, of course, but overall, I'm happy with my play. Very proud of my effort in the sixth game, and that sort of laid the foundation for everything. Nepomniachi 31 rude and missed the opportunity, but said he would learn from the experience. These things which happened here, they have never happened to me at basically any events in my career. I lost quite some stupid games, but not as many in such a short time, said the Russian. All right. Um, yeah. So I think generally, generally my take on this is that obviously I'm from the U S I'm from, from like a Western country. So, uh, so my take is always going to be on the side of, I, I can't really understand or relate to it. Um, and so that's, that's always how I'm going to view it. Obviously in Russia, it's viewed very, very differently as, as you can tell, I think, um, you know, in Russia, there's much more of a nationalistic attitude where it's all about winning. You you want to be the best. Um, and chess is one of those things where, uh, where, where Russia, they're very proud of their culture, as they should be. They've had many world champions. So I, I understand that. I mean, again... To me, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I do expect that um, there will be there will be quite a bit quite a bit of a blowback for Dubov going forward. Is is what I think um, in, in Russian circles. I mean, I don't think anything anything major will happen, obviously, but uh, but it is it is something of a risk that he that he did this. So. Again, to me, it doesn't make sense just because I, I come from a Western background. And, and to me, this nationalism thing, like, you know, I would work, I, I would gladly work with someone uh, from from probably another country. Although I have to say that it's still like to me, I, I feel like I feel like I, I have to say for me, well, there's nothing wrong with it. I would actually feel kind of bad. Like if Magnus was playing Fabiano and Magnus asked me to help him, I would feel a little bit bad. I do have to say that. Um, that doesn't mean that I think it should be some huge deal, but I, I would feel kind of bad about uh, I would feel kind of bad about working against Fabiano um, or Wesley for that matter. I, I would feel a little bit bad. So while I think it's, I mean, obviously it's Dubov's choice, and I don't think it should be a big deal. I would say personally, I, I don't think I would. I don't. I don't think I would be able to work for someone if they're playing against like Wesley or Fabiano personally. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Yeah, you do what, what's best in general, of course. I need Anna Kramley for the raid, raid with 680. I have no fundamental problem with it, but I personally would not do it. So there, there's my take on, on the whole thing. Also, what I would say separately, one one problem with this is that Dubov has actually, Dubov has worked for Magnus before. I don't think this is the first time. Um, I don't think this is the first time that that Dubov has worked for him. So that's also why it's a little bit weird too, because say it's the first time Dubov does it. I think there's, there's more reason, but I, Dubov worked with him, I think on the 2018 world championship or for various events as well. So it's not the first time. It's not the first time. Um, so yeah, he helped in the Fabiano match. Yeah. So, so that's, that's why it's kind of, to me, it's a little bit, a little bit weird, a little bit, a little bit weird that he worked from before and then to kind of not work. Uh, Sam was working as Fabiano. I don't believe that's true. Is it? Sam was working in 2016 when when Magnus played uh, played Sergey Karyakin. 
not 2018, I don't believe. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But yeah. So personally, I wouldn't do it, but I don't really see why it's a huge deal. Uh, thank you to Sol and Krishnik for the Prime. Thank you to Kitar for the 13 and 7 Tweet for the 12. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah. I'll look at Hammer's tweet. Some, okay, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to find it. Uh, I mean, let, let me see. Um, let's see. What, 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 what did the Hammer Man tweet? Okay, what, what is this tweet? We have this tweet from uh, Jan Ludwig Hammer that says, Karyak, Karyak and making a jab at Dubov. But I just want to make sure all future Carlson challengers know I'm for sale at the right price. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one uh, that's a good tweet that's that, that's actually a good tweet i like it um <laughs> very funny very funny from hammer that's that that's that's a good like that's a good debate i mean like i said i don't see a huge deal with it but personally i wouldn't do it oh so, yeah i'll look at the reply if i understand correctly cardiac and jab is against carlson yeah don't ruin my jokes with your facts but yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> good one good one that's a great tweet so it's yeah all kind of all kind of crazy to me i mean i don't think anything will happen but um but yeah it's it's what it is um why are the teams a secret because people prepare certain openings so like all uh, actually i will give um this, this is one criticism that i will give however uh in turn maybe criticism is the wrong word but one reason i think it's all a little bit silly in terms of blaming dubov is because is because Dubov was specifically preparing Magnus in the Catalans, and the two Catalan games that Magnus played in games two and six, he got into real trouble in both of those games. So trying to like pin the blame or find a scapegoat for the reason Jan lost is really a little bit silly. Because uh, because the two games, the two games, I'll, I'll just show you guys very quickly. Um, the two games that Magnus got into trouble, I'm not going to do the whole game. Um, but game number two was the Catalan. I don't remember the exact move order, but we get to the same position anyway. Um, where we had DC4, Queen C2, B5, Knight E5, um, Knight E5, Knight E5. And this was game number two, played between Magnus and Yacht. Magnus got into trouble in this game. This was very clearly a Dubov, Dubov idea, and Magnus was under a lot of pressure. So that was game number two. And then in game number six, the fateful one, which Magnus won, uh, he played Knight E3, E6, G3. I believe he played this. Castles, Castles. I, I'm pretty sure it was what? It was B3 uh or wait no was it b3 or was it c4 here no it was b3 it was b3 i think it was c5 um takes takes it was something like this right queen c2 queen e7 knight bd2 and in game number six when magnus got into trouble in this this whole line this was also a dubov idea and it was absolutely nothing Nepo was probably a little bit better if anything so trying to um trying to say that like trying to like say something about dubov when the two two games which dubov 100 percent had a had an impact on were games two and six where magnus got absolutely nothing it's just kind of cheesy um yeah it was not it was not very good it was not very good magnus was in trouble in both those games so like again like yeah i mean he helped i mean i, I guess you can get annoyed about it but what did he really do because what what decided the game was game six and it had nothing to do with preparation whatsoever so yeah it's all kind of uh kind of strange it's all it's all kind of strange. Dubov was a double agent trying to trying to um trying to get Magnus a bad position in games two and six, but Jan just wasn't able to convert them. <laughs> now that's going that's uh that's a, that's a good uh, high level conspiracy theory. All right, let's cover this article here. This is the article on Chess Twenty Four, and it says Dubov hits back at accusations of betrayal. When Norway's Magnus Carlsen clinched victory over Russia's Jan Nepomniachtchi, it was re revealed that Russian Grandmaster Daniil Dubov had once been, a, had once again been a key part of the world champions' team of helpers. That saw instant criticism led by Sergei Karyakin, with Sergei Shipov adding that Dubov would rightly now never play for the Russian team again. Daniil has hit back, attacking the mentality that treats an individual event as a team event, and pointing out he began working for Magnus before the winner of the candidates was known. All right. Uh, that was Daniil Dubov at Magnus's pre-match training camp in Spain. All right. It had long been clear that Magnus Carlsen was going to retain his world championship title, whatever happened in game 11, so that when the match ended, there was room for another story to take, take the headline. When the match with, with the match over, teams could be revealed, and though Jordan Van Forest working for Magnus was the one real novelty, it was Daniil Dubov again helping Magnus that drew all the attention. The collaboration was revealed in a video from their Spanish training camp in which Magnus introduces the team. 
It's both funny and revealing, with Magnus giving us a glimpse of how ideas are worked on, with Daniil playing a key role. Magnus Carlsen, of course, we have Daniil, who is, I would say, with Jordan Van Forest, not as distinctly young, um, but he still has a bit of the same curiosity, although he's become more selective. By the way, as far as farting, I think that was just a, he said the wrong word. I think he meant fighting. Anyway, we already just watched, so no need to go through the transcript. So let's get to the bottom. All right. Daniil's helping Magus, as he did for the 2018 match, whipped up an instant controversy in Russian chess circles, with 2016 challenger Sergei Karyakin attacking both Daniil and Magnus. Uh, despite the final result, I am proud that I was part of a very nice team. Thanks to at Jan for this invitation. Probably there were mistakes in preparation, but only few people know how hard Jan worked for the tournament. Hope he will recover and come back stronger. Then Sergei adds afterwards, Of course, I congratulate a world champion, but just a small remark. Imagine you have to play a world championship match against Carlsen. Will you accept help from, let's say, Hammer or Tari? Okay. So let's keep going with the article. It wasn't the first time Sergei got into an argument on Twitter, and now is perhaps the right time to recall that when the Russian team with Jan Napomniachi and Daniil Dubov and No Karyak had just missed out on winning the 2017 European Team Chess Championship, the following discussion took place. Karyak, I congratulate the Russian women's team on a brilliant win. The men fought to the end but came up a little bit short. Congratulations to the Azerbaijani team on a deserved victory. Depomniachi, won't you teach us how to fill, fill, uh, fill yourself, uh, uh, fill about the vic fill yourself about the victor when you miss out on the championship title? Of course, it's a translation, so it's going to be a little bit off. Um, Karyakin says, "The moment you miss out on the title, I'll teach you." Depomniachi, and do you root for Russia at all? Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Pretty spicy, to put it mildly. Okay, so that's the whole thread. So let's keep going. Karyak and his manager had antagonized some of the Russian chess community when they kept using the slogan, returning the chess crown to Russia on the road to the 2016 match. And when Sergei still gained most of the media attention given to chess in Russia, even after his defeat in New York. Well, what I would say about this, hey, I mean, clearly Sergei and his manager, I mean, I've met both of them on multiple occasions. Clearly, they, they understand they understand media, they understand biz and uh, getting your name out there. So, I mean, it is what it is. All right. Um, the slogan was revived by sponsors of Jan Nepomniachi in the run-up to the 2021 match. However, and in Russia, chess is much more closely bound up with national pride than in most other countries. Karyakin was joined by others in criticizing Dubov, including commentator and one-time coach of Daniil Sergei Shipov. He wrote on his Facebook page, and of course, this is in, uh, this is in Russian, so there's going to be a translation. He wrote... Ah, Danya, Danya, but why? For how much? Why wasn't it possible to rest for one match or to commentate on it on an internet site boldly and with talent? And now the seeds of discord have been sown in the Russian team. You get a classic situation from at home among strangers. For example, imagine that Duda is playing a world championship match and Wojtaszek helps his opponent. How would they look on that in Warsaw? Or Mamadiarov is fighting in the match of his life and Rajabov is in the other camp. Can you really imagine that they'll react to the situation calmly in Baku? Daniil himself didn't wait long to respond, and in a long interview with Grigory Tellengator for Championnat.com, he goes into detail both about working for Magnus and how the match went in general. It's a must-read, and we've translated the sections where Daniil talks about the match and preparing for it. All right, so here we go. You're again working with Magnus. How long ago did you restart? Again isn't quite the word. It suggests that we stop. It's simply that after the match with Fabiano, there was no need for it. We stayed in touch and could discuss some lines, but after the World Championship match, there was no reason to do any major work. And when did you start now for Dubai? Before the start of the candidates, I was asked what I thought about the idea of helping. I replied that it would be normal. That's perhaps the first thing I'd like to point out about the rather strange criticism. In normal teams, all, all the agreements are formulated in advance. Um, i.e. you don't have to wait for who wins the candidates in order to start preparing. All right. Was your agreement verbal or did you sign a contract about cooperating with Magnus's team? For me, there's no difference in principle. If it's verbal or on paper. Um, okay, first thing I will say for, for Dubov, uh, if it's verbal or on paper, there's a huge difference. Um, there is a massive difference. <laughs> um, so I hope that he's not so naive about about other contracts in the future because uh ver verbal verbal or on paper are very very different although i mean probably by verbal it doesn't mean an actual con it probably means an online conversation which legally is kind of the same thing um so all right um i won't pretend if i really wanted to say no then i could have done that after napomniachi's victory in yekaterina Berg. in that case would you simply violate the agreement or would you suffer some financial losses 
I can't reveal all the details of the contract, but to be honest, I don't even recall. I don't look at it. I, I don't look as I wasn't planning to say no. For a start, I wasn't prepared to break my word. When Jan won the Canada's tournament, did you think that hate would come your way because of your cooperation with Magnus? That's that someone might not like it is nothing new. It's not the first time I've encountered this, and I'm relatively calm about it. For me, there's no issue. I think it's the same for Jan. When people talk about the state or the Russia team, that's precisely the Russian team. Here, after all, it's not Russia versus Norway. Okay. So basically, he's trying to separate the two. So let's let's keep going. Um, when Daniil Dubov won the 2018 World Rapid Championship, he came under fire from the Russian media for saying what he thought, for instance, about the situation in Crimea. All right. Um, okay. And if it was teams, then, of course, I more likely than not wouldn't help the Norwegians. But here, it's precisely Napomniachi against Carlsen. Well, and in Jan's team, there aren't only Russians, as I understand. Here you could say it's a fair-haired guy against a dark-haired guy, an allusion to Ilf and Petrov's 12 chairs, where the con man hero pretends to be a grandmaster and gives a lecture, including, we'll see that the fair-haired guy plays well and the dark-haired guy plays badly, and no lecture will change the balance of power. All right. I, I don't understand this. I mean, I've never read this, obviously, so I, I, it's not something that makes a lot of sense to me, but we'll keep going on. Um... But it feels like I will say it feels like you, it feels like a Dubov is in some world where basically it's one world. There's like you know everybody's the same kind of, and I mean we'd like we'd like to believe that of course, but it's not the reality. So let's let's keep going. Okay, so it says you help the person you have better relations with, with or or who makes you the better offer, or in my case the one with whom it's much more beneficial to work in my view. A match of two people, an individual sport. Blowing it up into a great national story strikes strikes me as absurd. All right. How close are you to Jan? Did he tell you about his weak points or give you some inside information about himself? In general, Magnus and Jan know each other well. The Pomniachi helped, help, helped himself even in world championship matches. And it says Carlson knows Jan much better than I do. All right. They're of the same age. Since childhood, they've been playing in the same tournaments. There's nothing that I know about Jan that Magnus doesn't. Yes, I know Jan quite well, but you can't say we're really friends. We haven't worked together, at the very least, for the last three to four years, and maybe longer. We're colleagues. Of course we know each other, but I'm definitely not in Jan's closed circle. I don't have and couldn't have had any inside information. All right. What do you think? What do you think? Where do people get the idea that a Russian shouldn't help a foreigner prepare for a world championship match against a Russian? All right. And he says, I don't know where it comes from. Not, not from any great intellect, I guess. There are some kind of imperial ambitions. Everyone is against us. Everyone is an enemy, particularly if something doesn't go right for us. All right. So I'm just going to stop right there and add something generally. So, so what I would say about this is that, yes, it should not be a big deal. But I do feel like I, I feel like a Dubov lives in some sort of fantasy world uh, where there's this I idealism about somehow everyone's the same, there's no countries, none of these sorts of things. Um, and, and that's just not the reality. Um, I mean, I, I think, you know, in, in you, you'd love for the world to be like that, but that's just not reality, honestly, uh, to, to say something like that. I, I mean, again, I have no problem with it doing this, but trying to, like, con contextualize it as though, like, as though... Um, as though there aren't these nationalistic thoughts when someone's playing for a world championship. It's just not true. Um, not true at all. I mean, I would say the same thing. I do, I do believe what Shipov said above is true in the, con in the context that, you know, if, if, say, Fabiano plays a match and I help Magnus, for example, or say Wesley plays a match and I help Magnus, yes, it wouldn't get blown out of proportion in the general sense, but people would be pretty upset about it. People would not be happy if I did that. Um, so uh, this just feels a little bit too idealistic to me. Um, yeah, I'm so salty about Magnus winning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right. Okay. So let's keep going. In general, you could logically look at all this differently from the point of view of the Russian team. One of the best Russian chess players, relatively young, has worked as the best chess player in history. He's gained experience that will help him in his career. Okay. That's, that's actually, that is a valid point. I will say that that is valid. Um, that yes, for, for himself, Working with Magnus is probably better because he gets more out of it. Um, so that that is that part I actually do agree with. Let's keep going. Does it help? Does it help a lot? Um, for example, after my previous cooperation with Magnus, I won the World Rapid Championship. 
You can also look at the situation like that, or you can look at it in the context of them and us. It's probably a matter of perception. You said the news of your cooperation overshadowed the match itself. What gave you that impression? There aren't so many chess sites. Wherever you look, it's one of the main items. But okay, they published it. Those who are criticizing for some reason think that Jan's team and the Russian team are identical. From my professional point of view, those are absolutely different things. I play for the Russian team with great responsibility, great, great pride, pleasure. For me, it means a lot. I also played for free. And when I felt I couldn't, and, and, and when I felt I couldn't because it's important, it's another matter. Why should I help a team of people who I'm neutral with or unfriendly? All right. Who don't you get along with on Jan's team and why? I don't want to name people, but you yourself cited Jan about serving two masters. It seems to me that that's precisely the difference between the two teams. The team I was with wouldn't call me or anyone else a servant. What was your role on Carlson's team? We worked a lot and our roles were in many ways similar. Everyone was responsible for everything. It wasn't that you work on this position and someone else on another. Although some really did concentrate on finding new ideas, while others spent time polishing the existing materials. In the end, we all check everything everyone else has done. All right. You could also say that I spent more time on looking for new directions, and I also tried to put up resistance to Magnus and training games. Where and how did you hold your training sessions? I'm not sure I have the right to talk about everything, although an excellent video was just released from our training camp in Spain. And without training camps, there's also online preparation because there was a lot of work to do, both in the half year before Dubai and during the World Championship match. Magnus has, Magnus has everything worked out professionally. It's far, hard for me to imagine that during the match, someone on his team would fly, would fly first class to Dubai, then head back to Moscow to commentate, and then declare, today we'll win with Carlson. If people sign up for work, they'll, they'll work with full dedication. All right. Karyakin was in Moscow when he was urgently asked to return. They didn't ask my opinion. They just sent me the ticket. Also, the position, the position is complicated, and it's basically what Jan needs to go what Jan needs to go to get to complicated positions to try to outplay Magnus. Karyak is speaking to NRK. Today we will win. We know Magnus is strong, but I believe Jan is motivated and he is in good shape today. All right, so let's keep going. Here we go. How was the work organized during the games? It's always most interesting and difficult during the match. Despite the huge amount of preparation, the match itself becomes a dialogue between chess players and their teams. A test of strength. We prepare this and they prepare something else. Each seeks an antidote to the opponent's line. All the preparation is split between the games with white and black. With white, you should try to play for a win, which means you need fresh ideas. With black, the task is not just to hold them off, but equalizing out of the opening is excellent, and a draw in the end is also excellent. All pretty standard. Okay, to what extent did everything go according to your plan? As I see it, we tried lots of different ideas, some of which were found during the match. We managed to surprise Jean. We managed to surprise Jan. That doesn't mean we had an advantage, but as a rule, coming out of the opening, Jan was playing a position that he was absolutely unfamiliar with. That's also true. That's already not bad as, as world championship matches go, and we also believe that Magnus simply plays better chess, plays chess better. Our preparation was also based on that. If we can get a complex position that's unfamiliar to both players, that's an acceptable result. If Magnus knows it a little bit better, that's even better. Okay. And what was the approach on the other side of the board? A little different. By and large, they tried to break through in the same line. Apparently, it was a massive attack of a supercomputer, an analytical brigade, and brainstorming. A perfectly plausible approach, though it seems less attractive to me. Our armor proved to be solid. On account of what? All the games where we had black went more or less along the same lines. Magnus equalized and got the positions he was striving for. Well, and playing with, playing with white, we got quite an interesting battle. That's how I see it. I don't insist on my assessment, but it seems to me that our team surpassed theirs a little bit. Um, yeah, so I would actually agree with Dubov here as well. I felt that Jan went in with this one opening approach, which also already, I think, kind of suggests that you're an underdog, which is why I don't like it. Um, I don't like it because when you play one opening and you're trying to break through, it's basically fundamentally you're saying, we're going to use our super computers, we're going to take this 0.3, 0.4 advantage, and we're going to prove that we can break through because it's the only spot where we think we're, we're, we're going to be able to win. Is, is if we can use the computer to our advantage. So that I do agree with Jan's statement there. I think when they finally switched it up, it was way too late. And it didn't feel like it was really well thought out, um, is, is, my, is my opinion. Um, because I think, that, I think that Jan should have switched earlier after probably game three. Worst case, after game five, for sure. Um, but he should have switched to playing D4 and C4 
um, much earlier in the match. So I, I think do have a spot on with that assessment. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, do you have any suggestions for why Nepo became Nepomniachtchi became so burnt out? A world championship match is huge stress. In my view, Jan played five and three quarters of the games brilliantly. The way he operated was fantastic at the limits of his ability, and he was in no way inferior to Magnus, which made his sharp decline all the more surprising. Simply the main strength of Carlson is that even on his worst days, he doesn't fall below a certain level, and that level is very high. Also very true. Um, also very, very true. Which, by the way, is why Magnus is still the best. Because even when he has a bad tournament, he's still always playing for first place. That doesn't mean he'll always win first place, but he's always still in contention. Whereas everybody else, when they when they have a bad bad day or a bad tournament, they're nowhere near the top of the table. For example, I'll look at myself. If I have a bad day, I'm, I'm somewhere near the bottom of the table. Fabiano, he's had quite a few events where he's near the bottom of the, bottom of the table. Wesley, same thing. So... Uh, it is that is very very true that when you see Magnus playing badly, he's still somewhere near the top. He always is on the outside with a shot at first place. Uh, now that doesn't mean he gets there, but he's always he always has a shot at it. Um, it's just the margins. The margins are, are thin, and he's always up there competing even when he's not playing his best. Um, and that's, so that's a hundred percent accurate. All right. Okay. That that isn't Jan's strong point. On a good day, he can beat anyone, but on a bad one, he can lose to anyone. As has already been said, at the end, Jan played in such a way that you didn't need to be Magnus to beat him. That's precisely what makes World Championship matches so tough. There are a lot of games. At some moment, the stress will get to you and the fatigue will tell. Did Carlsen deliberately extend the games in order to imbalance Jan? We didn't discuss it, but I think that was one of the elements. Magnus is more resilient. And then there was also the schedule. Previously, there was usually a rest day after two games, but here there were three in a row. Roughly speaking, the idea was to make the play as difficult as possible for both sides. It was also tough for Magnus, after all. Simply, one of them began to play a little worse, but the other but the other played much worse. No doubt that's one of the things that makes him the best chess player in history. Spot on, completely accurate. Um, couldn't, couldn't disagree more. I will say, however, the funny thing about this is that the reason... maybe I don't know if this is the actual reason Fide changed it. Um, if it's the actual reason... But in the past World Championships, it was two rest day, two rest day. But I think FIDE made three three days and then three games and then a rest day because that meant there were games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which, of course, was much better for all the fans who wanted to watch. So it's kind of ironic that FIDE made a move that was really good, I think, for spectators um, around the world to watch. But it was bad. I think it was very bad for Jan, objectively. So let's keep going. All right. Did you talk to Magnus during the match? Literally a couple of times. Like the majority of the team, I wasn't in Dubai. It seems to me that during the match, Magnus likes to isolate himself from unnecessary interaction. As a rule, there's someone from his family and one person from the team who handles all the communication, which of course would be Peter Heine Nielsen and his father. Um, well, I congratulated him on his birthday, but nothing special. Does Magnus know you've been criticized? I think he was asleep on the morning after the match. No doubt he celebrated after the victory, as we also did a little. Although they did ask me in advance if there was a problem with revealing Magnus's helpers. I said there wasn't. In any case, many knew about it, and it would soon become public knowledge. It's better to get a flurry of criticism when you expect it. All right. So yeah, there's a tweet from Magnus, and then at the bottom it says, What do you think? Is there a problem with chess players working on the opposing team to someone from his own country? Let us know in the comments. All right, so yeah, I mean, what I'm what I'm gonna say, broadly speaking, about this is that um, I don't think there's anything wrong with working working for someone from another country. I personally would not do it, as as I sort of explained while we were reading the article. But to turn it into something where it's like you blame, if, where you blame him for what I would argue was, I mean, definitely not. I mean, in no way had anything to do with his preparation. Um, it just strikes me as sour grapes. That's, it strikes me as sour grapes. Um, I mean, I understand people being mad about it, but I, do, I don't really get it. I, I don't get it. Uh, the only thing I will say, however, is I think that Dubov is, is pretty naive uh, in terms of how he views the world, thinking that um, thinking that there would not be people who are really upset about it or, or, or thinking that, like, nationalism is not a thing um, and that every, it's just, you know, chess player versus chess player. I think, I think that's a very naive thing for, for Dubov to think. But, uh, but, but overall... I, it's just it's it's silly. It's just silly. It's just silly to me. It's it's silly. So so that's 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 what I would say broadly speaking on the topic. And um, you know you hope nothing happens, uh, but it is Russia, and and we'll see. We'll see. But yeah. 
So that, that's my take on it. I personally wouldn't do it, but I, you can't. I mean, it's just silly to to be critical to be critical about it. Um, also, I will give you another. You know, I'll give you I'll give you something else where I think a player had much more reason to be be upset. I'll give you a perfect example. So I'll give you the perfect example. So Peter Heine, he worked a little bit for Magnus. Many many. Um, we have a poll running, by the way. Um, Peter Heine Nielsen, I think he worked with Magnus a little bit when Magnus was maybe around Grandmaster, but not when he had become the strongest player in the world. And Peter Heine worked a little bit, and then he was working with Vichy Anand for many World Championship matches. I think probably for close to a decade, I think Peter Heine Nielsen worked for Anand. And then when they when 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 uh, Magnus played Anand for the World Championship in 2014, I think that Peter Heine switched sides. And he worked for Magnus. And you didn't actually, you didn't see Vichy getting really, really angry about it or causing a kerfuffle. When I think in Vichy's case, it would be much more justified because, because he had worked with Peter Heine and Peter Heine had done a lot of work. So he knew a lot of Vichy's openings and preparation really, really well, but there was nothing done. And, um, and like, I would say in that case, you, you should like totally flip out about it. But you saw like the way Vichy handled it was completely different. And uh, I suspect that Peter Heine did not like share secrets either because uh, he's, he's a very professional trainer. But that's an example where it's like, that's a thousand times more on the line and nothing, and there was nothing that came came, uh, came about it. So that's that's the last bit that I'm going to add um, ab about, 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 uh, about, about this is that you, you see Vichy. Vichy, you know, had way more, way more reason. And, um, and it just, uh, yeah, it just, it, it didn't happen. So yeah, that's that, that's that. Um, so it's, it's what it is, but you hope, you hope it's going to blow over, but again, no one really knows. Um, but that's what it is. Is Sergey your friend? I mean, I think I'm on pretty good relations with a lot of people. I like, you know, I like Sergey in general. I, I don't really have any, any issues with him. Um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm actually not a big fan of Duba for, for quite a few reasons, but still that doesn't change my, my view on the whole, uh, on the whole topic. So Plain and simple, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a little bit too much. It's a little bit too much, in, in my opinion. But we'll see what happens in Russia. We'll see. So that's that.